Welcome to Nature Calls, Conversations from the Hudson Valley. Our team's goal is to present science-based information about gardening and all things nature in New York's Hudson Valley. Host Jean and Tim, along with team members Teresa and Linda, are master gardener volunteers for New York's Columbia and Green Counties. So if you're interested in gardening or nature or nuggets of information about what's happening outside your door, settle in. Enjoy the conversation. Whatever the season, we have something to say. Hi, I'm Tim Kennelty. And I'm Jean Thomas. And welcome to Nature Calls, Conversations from the Hudson Valley. We are really excited today because we're going to have a conversation with Madeline Hooper, the host of the PBS series Garden Fit. Welcome, Madeline. Thank you, Tim. From what we can tell, you've led several lives already. Let's see if I got everything right here. You've run a huge public relations company. During that time, apparently in your leisure... You took up ballroom dancing and became one of the top amateurs in the country. So cool. <laughs> then, of Thank course, you. you went pro and taught dance. Evidently, that became boring and you turned to gardening. Aches and pains followed the new pastime, so you went to a personal trainer. And, of course, now you're making yet another career move, teaching gardeners better fitness. Did I leave anything out? I think that's about it. <laughs> we are so in need of your help here. I, my back is killing me from t moving around mulch, so we really, really want to talk to you. And that's today. a big task, moving yeah, around mulch. Absolutely. Yes. Just moving around from one place to another. Just moving is, just, yeah. Yes. We'll talk or about just, the cow later. Or just moving, period. <laughs> just right. moving, yeah. Now, did we mention the Brooklyn Botanical and the Berkshire Garden Centers? Are you still working with both? Actually, I worked with the Brooklyn Botanical Garden for about seven years. I was living in New York City and just gardening on the weekends, coming up here to Columbia County. And then when we moved up here full time, I felt that it was just too far away. It was hard. And we got very involved in the Berkshire Botanical Garden. And I have been vice chair for longer than I can count. <laughs> I'm really very involved with that public garden and just love it. It's a great garden. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Now, your own home is Rockland Farm. It is. And you are open days for the Garden Conservancy's open days program? Yeah, so I feel so lucky that I did learn a lot about gardening by visiting gardens. And, you know, there's nothing like hearing a gardener say, oh, I put this here three places and now I found the right place. And you can sort of almost see why that has happened. And so I feel that what the Garden Conservancy does is fantastic. So we open our garden once a year and we get hundreds of people. And it's lovely. And some people come back year after year and we're exchanging seeds and plants together. Mm. It's a, a really a whole community of wonderful people. And did you get inspiration from going to other people's gardens? Totally. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the things you, you get ideas and inspiration, and it's great to talk it, to other gardeners, it, too. It is, because everybody's garden, now that I've visited so many, I think in season one we've been to 13 and 13 again. And I think I've seen a pretty much like 100 gardens in my life, maybe more. And everyone is unique to that person or persons who do it. And I really love seeing that special way. So you can take an ordinary plant like a hosta, and everybody uses it differently. And that's what's so exciting, I think, about really creating an environment of native plants or any, any kind of material that you'd love having around you. I'm a little worried because I've seen Jean's garden and if it reflects your personality, I'm worried that we might need to find a, 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 a head doctor or something for her. Get an orange? It does. No, but it's oh, really... Oh, look, she's, she's, no, she's digging on <laughs> she, She's agreeing. No, but it is really true, right? It's A garden really does reflect your personality. Totally. Yeah. And also how you like to live in your environment. If you're lucky enough to have a yard, maybe you want to cook out there or perhaps, you know, the kids play ball or whatever. It's nice to really surround your life with outdoor activities. So we're master gardeners, and a lot of the master gardeners and also master forest owners, many of them are retired and older. And I think we probably need your advice in terms of going out there because we still have the passion for gardening, and we want to go out there and be out there, you know, seven days a week. And, right. But 
we can't always do that because sometimes we hurt ourselves, like I've just done this fall, or we don't have the same stamina. So, and then you have kind of a common sense approach for all of that, right? We do. And I actually, I mean, that's really what happened to me because once I stopped working every day and gardened every day, the more I garden, the more I hurt. Right. And when I talked to my friends, everybody said the same thing. You know, I've hurt my back. I've hurt my knees are giving way. I just got to this moment where I thought, this is ridiculous. I have years, hopefully, in my garden. I have to figure out a way to fix this. And somebody, another gardener, suggested a personal trainer. I had never been to a personal trainer. And all of a sudden, I started to learn how to use my body correctly and realize, just like you're saying, Tim, it was so simple. I mean, this is a matter of putting one foot in front of the direction you're bending. It is not lifting barbells and stuff. So it really, after getting trained and accepting the fact that I had to figure out how to really do these new body habits in the way I move and get up and down from the ground or lift heavy things like we all do, I really started to think everybody should know about this. It's not in our culture. I mean, when I mention the concept of taking care of your body while you're taking care of your garden, people say, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> Why did I think <laughs> like, that? <laughs> exactly. And I, I really think that nobody has really given enough time. We go out and want to weed an entire bed and have the, the satisfaction of that without ever thinking about how your back's going to feel the next day. Well, and especially when you start in the spring, I know you've been kind of sedentary all winter. And you go out there that first time and you either hurt yourself or you just think, I can't do this anymore. So what's your advice for starting up after you've not been gardening for a while? So we have this fix that we call the county fair. And really, the basis of this is, you know how if you go to a fair, you go to a lot of different rides? Well, if you can get your mind to accept the fact that you should not do one activity for more than 30 minutes, Mm. you exhaust a muscle group. So if you weed for 30 minutes, and then let's say you're collecting debris for another 30 minutes or pruning for another 30 minutes, when you go back to weeding again, those muscles are fresh. So kind of the first rule of thumb is just be smart about how long you're going to use certain muscles in your body. So I picture Tim out in his yard. <laughs> every See, this is the episode where I'm going to be leaps abused. He leaps from one job to another. I like that. Well, well, it's a fun tip. I mean, it's not the whole answer, but it is another way to well, think about sense. yeah, absolutely. approach. But it's going. a way to plan, right? Because I think, I don't know if other people feel this way, but you'll have maybe 10 tasks, right? Right. And there's so much. If, if you, I mean, I keep expanding my garden ridiculously, right? But you have so many tasks. It's a way to organize your tasks that is probably more practical, right? It's more practical and it's more thoughtful. So instead of just going out and sort of doing something, I find that I do plan better and that I have all the right tools with me when I get out there because I realize I'm going to do more things than just weed, let's say. And the other thing about that is once you go from one task to another, you breathe. You can stretch. You know, you can move your body in a way that's very different than when you're doing heavy activity or repetitive motions like digging or, again, bending down all the time. I find that to be Really great. And is there something specific, I was asking you this before we kind of came on, for your back? Because I think a lot of people hurt their backs and then they just keep re-injuring them. Hmm, who could that be? Both of us. (laughs) Not me. Um, But is there- That was me. Is there kind of some really basic advice in terms of not hurting your back? Yes. The point is to really not abuse it. So there's so many things you can do with using your hip joints- where you're not really first using your back. There's so many ways to get up and lift things where you're using your whole body to help carry things so you're not hunching over and you're distributing the weight of what's in front of you with your shoulder blades and your back muscles that are on top that won't get stressed because they're there to do that exact activity. So balance and understanding, again, how your body moves correctly. Unfortunately, our bodies are lazy. Everybody slumps. Everybody can hurt their back very easily gardening. And probably, like you say, we all have. So you really have to 
learn a better way of using different parts of your body that will not strain your back or, or your knees or your wrists or any, any part of your body. Well, and it sounds like you kind of have to be conscious of all of this, right? You go out there kind of unthinkingly and you just start pushing that wheelbarrow without really thinking, okay, what am I really doing to my body? Right? Yes, exactly. I have another tip, an easy tip. Oh, like good. I like you. tips. <laughs> so we tell everybody to be ambidextrous. So the wheelbarrow made me think of that. If you're pulling a cart, don't just pull it with one hand. We all do that. Just do that for a while and switch and pull it with the other hand. Even when I'm clipping or deadheading, you'd be surprised how easy it is to use your other hand, not your dominant hand. You can teach yourself how to do that quite quickly. So you're literally reducing the stress by 50%. So The only thing I can't do that way is shoveling. Shoveling is harder. Yeah. But you can shovel two different directions. So you can stand on one side of the shovel and put the mulch <laughs> in or out of a wheelbarrow and then go to the other side. Huh. So if you just think about what you can do both ways, so to speak, you also will cut down on physical stress. Do you have any knee tips? My friends have bought me like kneelers and they've bought me knee pads. I mean, what's your advice in terms of really trying to save your knees besides going to the surgeon and having them replaced? Right. Well, working with two trainers now, I've kind of learned a bunch of ways. I, so, I, you know, I'm not a physical therapist in any way, so I don't want to overstate this. But I think that it's really important when you go down to the ground and bend very low that you literally don't strain your knees. So we have, again, a position that we call the armchair. Where you, it's really a squat, but you're not letting your knees go way past your toes you put one knee down at a time. So there are ways where you can slow down the erosion of the use of your knees. And again, I think I'm not the perfect person if you, but I don't mean to plug the show, but if you watch the no, show. No, we need to watch the yes, show. I mean, you'll oh, yeah. see so many yeah. examples of how this can be done correctly and helpfully. Yeah, it's not something you can really explain, right? It's something you have to watch, which I'm going to start watching even more. Well, my favorite part of the show, as far as the show and tell, was the shoulder blade thing. Oh, shoulder oh, blades. Ah, light bulb went off. Well, you know, the, of course, you have to do this when you're gardening, in my mind, because you're, again, repeating so many tasks. But I go around my house correcting where my shoulder blades are all the time, and I plan on doing that all winter. So by the time summer comes, it's even a stronger habit, and I never have to think about it again. Because that posture is so correct for your body that it doesn't strain other parts. I don't know what you're talking about with the shoulder blade oh, okay. thing. I <laughs> tell, me, tell me what you mean by that. Jean, Jean just automatically assumes just figure everyone that we live together or something relating. like that. I don't, I'm not sure everybody even knows where the shoulder blades are. There's that. I don't <laughs> I think, know what, if, uh, if I have shoulder blades. You I mean, may not. I might not, yeah. <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> so if you are standing with the right posture, you're lining up your head, which is so important, over your shoulders, you know, over your hips, and obviously your legs and feet. If you start to bend over, it's very easy for your shoulder blades to come up. And then if you start collecting or using your hands in front of your body or lifting anything, they come up even more. Your shoulders come up, and that is a strain on the body. So we're always lowering our shoulder blades. What we like to say, just think about them slipping down into your jeans pocket. Really just let them go down your back, and your chest comes up. It's much easier to have something go down than try to keep something up. So I could tell you to get into the same position by raising your chest, but it's not as much fun. <laughs> and you probably won't do it. Yeah. It's really So good. just let them slip down. And it does help. And this is my own kind of self-serving question because people always say, oh, how do you get fit? Well, and I always say, well, I'm out there gardening. It is a really good aerobic exercise. It certainly yeah. is. And it's so good for the whole body because anything that's good for your mind and body is just good. In one of our previous interviews, we talked with a master gardener volunteer who studies the ergonomics on gardening. She specializes in what tools are best and things like that. Is that something you're going to be pursuing in future episodes? Well, I'm not sure we're going to be pursuing those particular tools mm. because we are really promoting that the most important tool is, is your body. Okay. If you use your, use your body correctly, you really will use any type of tool in a better way. However, the ergonomic tools are wonderful, and I do personally use some of them, and I think that anything you can do 
to relieve the physical stress so you can enjoy the mental pleasure. And, and the time that you spend in your garden is really important to learn about. I know this is about kind of physical use of your body, but is, is meditation a piece of this too? I mean, do you get into that at all in the show in terms of kind of getting into the zone when you're out there gardening? I don't know if meditation is the right word for me, although Jeff, who was the personal trainer in our first season, loves to meditate, and I think he found that really very relaxing and important in his life. I find that the minute I'm on the ground or feeling plants or looking at them, I'm in another state. Mm -hmm. It really gets me into the Zen place. I don't know the right words to explain what that is, but I think the world really goes away from me, and I'm nature. Well, and when we were talking about kind of being aware of what you're doing, it's kind of being in the moment rather than thinking of, you know, what kind of problems you have or or what you have to do that day or, or something like that, right? So you're in the moment thinking about your body, but also kind of being part of nature exactly. as well. I mean, the whole thing is such a pleasure. I remember talking to somebody years ago and they said they loved to garden because it gave them a chance to think about their work and all the stresses of working like that. Well, that's kind of just the opposite of what you should be doing, right? <laughs> I mean, I think it's about getting away from that. It, it, I think it is for me, too. It's very relaxing. So what do you have planned for the second season? Or do you have a lot of new gardens that you're going to visit? And, of course. And, and tell us. Okay, what, 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 yeah. yeah, what do we, do you have plans for different places? I mean, because it's not just about the physical piece of it. It's about these gardens that you're visiting as well, right? It is because. We are all voyeurs. Yes. Yeah, and absolutely. Honestly, it, like I mentioned earlier, it's just so exciting to get to a new place and hear the people who have created it talk about it. And some of the gardens we're visiting season two, as in season one, People have been working in that garden for 30 years. I mean, it's such a devotion. And they've watched the trees grow. Right. You know, they've they've seen how plants self-seed. And they're just in their environment, which is great. So we're going to do exactly what we did in season one. We're going to travel all over the country. And we have, I think, a really exciting group of interesting gardeners because in season one, we went and visited people whose whole life was gardening. They were either professional gardeners, landscape architects, garden designers, or amateurs who just absolutely have decided with their garden. And in season two, we're visiting artists who are very well known in their field, really well known in their field, but are keen gardeners. Is that a pun? <laughs> <laughs> Almost, yes. No, I think she's teasing. I want to know who these yeah. people are. No, I'm not going to tell you. I know. <laughs> You heard it here first. Yes, mm -hmm. but you, but this is the first time I've actually, you know, spoken about uh -huh. this out loud. But That's very... really interesting, though. Artists who have gardens. Well, interesting. I think it follows up on what you were asking about. Is it meditative? Mm -hmm. For these people, and they're really quite a variety from, you know, visual artists, painters, musicians, etc. They cannot live without having nature in their art, period. It's such an amazing relationship. And really, their gardens start to look like their art, and their art certainly has the elements of their garden in it, literally or figuratively, or in their mind, the colors, the patterns, the rhythm. It's really, it was an amazing experience. So well, that's kind of, I think, would be interesting. This is really more where, certainly, we're going to give as much physical advice, but as to really garden in a smart way. But these people are really inspirational in how creative they are. I think that it goes hand in hand, right? Because gardening is, I think, you're creating art, really. I mean, you're you're doing something that you're changing the landscape, right? And you're, again, it's very personal. And even though I never plan what I'm going to do, it, you know, <laughs> it's one of those things where I see a plant in the nursery and I have to buy it. And then it, somehow it fits in. And sometimes things really work well together and sometimes they don't. But it is, you're creating this, this you you have this kind of, blank canvas and you're creating art. So it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's great. And, you know, I think the other thing that makes, I don't know if we all always think out loud about what it is that makes us so happy in our garden, but it is about relationships. It's about what plant you put next to the other and how they intertwine or grow together or how a vine grows up a tree. So I, I think that th there's so much happening that you've started. Well, and you're also... I mean, if you're planting particular things, you're attracting 
particular birds or particular insects. And so you're just creating this environment that I think is a piece of art. Maybe I'm overstating it. Jean's looking at me like I'm No, not. actually, I'm absorbing a thought. Make a note. <laughs> uh, but I heard a big clunk. Gardening, you know? that was it. Yeah. Gardening is art in four dimensions because mm-hmm. you worked in the factor of time and it's always moving. That's so so I yeah. think so I think the concept of your artist is going to be really fascinating, I, really fascinating. I not even a hint, not <laughs> even a hint. <laughs> We're excited though. Yes. Yeah, yes. we'll come back and oh, we'll share come, all yeah. of it if you like. Yeah. Deal. Absolutely. Deal. I, and I guess my uh, question for you is, how then, if you go across the country, how do you go about choosing people and gardens? I mean, do you? It does a lot of work go into visiting different gardens. How do you do that? A lot of luck well, okay. goes into it. Okay. Yeah. I think being in the garden world, you know, working at these botanical gardens, traveling a lot, joining organizations, going to a lot of lectures and conferences, I've met so many people who really recommend other people. So if I want to mm-hmm. find somebody in New Orleans, you know, some other gardener who's in Santa Fe has a friend there. So in season one, a good percentage, like about 20% of the places we went, I actually had seen those gardens, personally seen them. But the kind of leap of faith was some of the gardens we visited, I had never seen the garden. I've seen pictures and I spoke to people, but I think gardeners have a language and you can just tell when you're on the phone with someone who cannot wait for you to see everything they've done. You can just hear it. And so I think I just go by instinct. I know that sounds terrible. No, and it friends great. Yeah. and lots of friends who you know said, you know, you really got to call Joe or call this person or whatever. And I tried to find a big variety of styles of gardening or different design approaches. And obviously different locations have such different plant mm-hmm. palettes. Right. Exactly. So, you know, what what grows in Marfa, Texas doesn't grow in New England, right? <laughs> or so I think it was uh, just Again, a series of nice coincidences, and every person was better than I had hoped. Well, and I'm sure people are delighted to show you their garden because you're welcoming and you're interested, and you are also going to show them how to not hurt their back, yeah. right? Yeah, they <laughs> cannot wait for that book. <laughs> it's like a trade. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good deal. So I know you won't answer the first part of this, but the first part of the question is, what was your favorite garden in the season? And the second part is... What's your dream garden that you want to get at? <laughs> Those are good questions. Well, my I can answer the first part. Oh, good. My favorite garden was the one I just left. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> each garden just got us all really excited yeah. <laughs> again. Not only myself, but the whole crew, everybody. It was really uh, quite an experience. I don't have a dream garden. I have a fantastic garden, and I'm happy with it. And I really want to learn more, obviously, about native plants and trees. What is so exciting for me about the dream of gardening is that I learned so much. I, you almost can't take two steps without learning something in your own garden. But there's so many people to listen to, like your podcast, which is fascinating. It's a wonderful life to absorb that kind of information. So I feel like the dream is never ending, that I can just keep absorbing things and making myself more knowledgeable and understanding what nature is doing, like right under my feet. You've almost answered our last question. I think so. She's just defined gardening, but now give her (laughs) the part. So we always ask kind of the question of you're out there, you're talking to people. I mean, there's bad things happening in the world, but what gives you hope when you're out there talking to folks? Okay, so I really do have tremendous hope because I think that there is this new understanding of how important living with nature is. And I just heard the statistic that 20 million new people started to garden last year. Over 100 million households identify themselves in this country as doing some form of gardening, even if it's an herb on the kitchen counter, right? So I feel like if we all thought of gardening the earth, stop talking about the negative, stop talking about climate change. I mean, what's happening, unfortunately, is happening. And just really focus on what we each can do in our own little stamp, our own little place on the earth. If we all either did this in a public garden, if you don't have land, or certainly in your little spaces that you can garden, the whole world would change. I love that idea. And I think you're almost talking like Doug Tallamy. Basically, you as a gardener can make a difference. And as a community, you can make a huge difference. Absolutely. Right? Totally. Yeah. 
Excellent. This, I think it's a great way to end. And and we want to thank you so much. It's been delightful having you. Oh, it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank we you want so you much. Back. We can't we can't <laughs> we can't wait to watch season two when all is revealed. Yes. Right. Well, I'll be happy to come back before it even premieres to <laughs> give you an insight. <laughs> thank you so much for coming and thanks to our listeners as well. Thank, thank you. you. That concludes another episode of Nature Calls, Conversations from the Hudson Valley. We would like to thank Sandra Linnell and Devin Connolly from Cornell Cooperative Extension of Columbia and Greene Counties for production support. And a special thank you to our listeners for joining us on this episode of Nature Calls, Conversations from the Hudson Valley. You can find links to any of the topics mentioned in this episode at our website at ccecolumbiagreen.org. Comments and suggestions for future topics may be directed to us at columbiagreenmgb at cornell.edu or on the CCE Master Gardener Volunteers of Columbia and Green County's Facebook page. For more information about Cornell Cooperative Extension of Columbia and Green Counties, visit our website at ccecolumbiagreen.org or visit us in Hudson or in Acre. Cornell Cooperative Extension provides equal programming and employment opportunities 